Hello, uh, in this video, uh, we are going to start the process of building a user authorization or in other words, a login wall for your Swell application. And we're going to start from what we left from the last video, uh, which was an application with routing and templating. So in this video, we are going to see about environment variables uh, in the application, PSR4 autoloading, controller middlewares and a basic uh, MySQL connection and retrieval data from there. So let's jump right in. Uh, what we have here is uh, a basic callback for a route. Uh, let's, let's start by uh, turning this into a controller. So I, I already created here uh, a namespace. So if we go to our Composer JSON, I added this autoload for a PSR namespace. If you go to Composer uh, documentation, you'll see more about this, but this is going to map my code namespace to a source directory. So if we go to our controller, uh, you'll see that I have this namespace, my code HTTP controllers, which is exactly the, the path here. The only difference is that my instead of source, I have my code. And this is how uh, Composer Autoload is going to load. So let's map, it. as you can see, this is the exact same thing that we have here, with one exception, the deer. This is a, uh, and there is root deer. This is a basic strategy that I use, because uh, if we're going to use the, the, the PHP deer like this, uh, what we have is uh, we are going to have to use uh, to know the depth of our of our directory to to go back to the root or so we would have to do something like this because these views here starts from the root is in the root and uh, I don't want to use this this like that so what I have here it's basically equivalent of doing this const equal like this. So now this constant is going to be globally available and there I can reference the root directory of my project like this. So this is basically the change and also I moved the views to a subdirectory. So let's move that. Let's do that. So basically this is the data structure. So I'm going to create a directory views and I'm going to move view one into views. Okay. So that's basically what I did. I have my view one right there. And now let's move the controller. Uh, so the way to declare the controller is very simple. We're going to declare like this. This is going to map this callback to there. We can remove uh, the callback and we just have to load the controller by the namespace like this or put the entire namespace right here. Uh, both will work. So what we have here is basically we are loading everything there. So let's test to see if it worked. Basically, it's going to print the same thing as in the last video. Okay, perfect. We have a controller. Success. Now we are going to put a, a environment variable loading. So we have an env, a simple env here with some information. Uh, to do that, uh, we are using a package uh, called .env. If you see, this is the one. And you can search more information on their repo or packages.org. And basically, uh, the simple code that they give us works perfectly, which is this. So it, it's going to load that file uh, from the root directory or the same directory where it is loaded from. So if we var down here and load this environment variable like this which is where they load from uh, load to this is what we get so success again let's move forward now we have controllers and we have the environment variable auto loading so now what we're going to do is we are going to test our database connection and our database for our database connection i'm basically going to to use this example here and in this example here what I'm doing is I'm loading uh, in one, whatever user I have there. So let's add first 
the route so this is the route to do that so as you can see you can search this format uh, more information about this format in the slim framework documentation so basically this is going to be a variable available in the controller and the way you retrieve it is in args so as you can see we have the argument key id which is the same key that we have here and the show user is the name of the method so with this in hand what we are going to do is whenever i load this route users slash id which can be one two three whatever whatever uh, that exists i'm going to load another view which is going to be the view tree we, we don't have that view yet and we're going to pass to that view the user information and then we're going to display this is going to be a very basic example so let's put uh, this basic example there so uh, let's create a file here view tree dot php okay view tree dot php okay so now the view tree is there is available for us i'm already uh, expecting some information here we are probably going to get some exception if that data doesn't exist so let's skip that exception for now this is just an example so for us to proceed we are go i prepared some files here first i'm going to start users table and then i'm going to insert uh some some code so to start the users table you can see that i'm starting a module here so i already have prepared in the source db a users the a users class and this class is not like an example model of how you should do this is just an example again and there i have some data some some methods prepared for example create table uh, find get all get insert update delete yeah all the steps that i need to proceed and pers uh, persist and retrieve data so with that in mind i just run the create table there so for us to have a mysql instance i'm going to leave there just in case you want to use this one you can also install in bare metal the mysql database i don't like that i i prefer to use docker so i'm going to install uh create a container with mysql and another container having php my admin so i can administrate my database so let's do it this composer up minus d I'm going to have my database created. So if we go to, to the port where I have the PHP my admin, you'll see that I already have this example to be created right there. So let's have there it is. It's empty for now. There is no table there. So let's insert, let's create a table users. So let's just run that file. Start users table. That's it. If I refresh, I have the user's table. I have the user's table now with all the fields that I need. Ema name, email, password, created that. Okay. So now I created also another file called insert example data, which I'm going to insert a new, a new user. Uh, I can customize by adding arguments. So we will see some warnings because I don't have these keys, but don't worry about that. Let's proceed, insert. Now I, I should have a user record success again so now when i ac access uh that route i'm going to see a user so let's go there index user one there it is i can see the user now so now let's add a, a quick middleware so uh, i already have the middleware class created right there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add that middleware and this is how you add a middleware on slim route so this middleware i have to add its namespace so this is how you add its namespace and if you go there you'll see that i'm just checking if the record that i'm retrieving exists if it doesn't exist i, sh I throw this record doesn't exist exception and that's all to it so if i run every like if i repeat that request everything runs okay but if i retrieve the second user that doesn't exist user two 
I'm going to have an exception. And if we go there to see which exception, here it is. Record doesn't exist. Thrown at the middleware. So this is how you know that the middleware worked fine. Okay, so let's stop and pause here. This is our first step towards having uh, user authorization in our application. In this video, we saw how to, how to convert our callbacks in routes into controllers. And once we are in the controllers, we, we saw how to, to map, uh, how to find the root directory of our project. So we facilitate references on how to load views and or everything that we need from there. We saw how to add environment variables to our code, how to add auto load using PSR4 to our code, how to add a middleware and how to throw exceptions from there. And a basic example of on how to persist and retrieve data from MySQL database. So this is the first step towards having user authorization. So let's pause here and continue in the next video.